What's up nerds, Brandon here from nerdlocker.com and we've got this week's comic book reviews. I'm starting off my review with Wonder Woman, psh, 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 number 21. I love this book, I love Brian Azzarello. Cliff Chang artwork is absolutely incredible. And we get to see Wonder Woman beat some ass in this issue. She's fighting the firstborn. I'm still not totally sure what they're calling him, but that's what I'm gonna call him. And it's, it's actually a really action-packed issue. Orion shows back up, which kicks ass, and then something super incredible happens. They introduce a well-known thing in the DC universe that if you've been reading, you kind of know we've been building up to this. I don't want to give it away, though, because I don't want you to not pick up the issue, because it's incredible. I cannot wait to see where he's going with this book, because it's awesome. I'm giving this a five out of five nerd skulls. Keep up the good work, guys. Hey guys, this is Haley, and this week I got to read Supergirl number 21. And there were some really great things about this story, particularly um, we kind of get the hint that she may have landed on this place that might be able to make a new Krypton. So it really, that's where things hit. And that, that was the interesting part of the story. The rest, I'm not quite sure how everything fits together yet. And I'm not sure that they're going to come together. I'm a little bit concerned about that. Um, it was an interesting read, but it definitely wasn't the best storyline I think it might pick up, but I don't know. I'm going to give this one three nerd skulls and we'll see what happens. Hey there guys, Cubby here with my reviews for this week. I got to read Star Wars Legacy Volume 2, whatever you want to call it, Series 2. It's number four though, and it was awesome. This story has actually been really, really surprising and cool, and it's you know starting to pick up and get really crazy, and I actually really enjoyed it, because um, if you've been reading the regular Star Wars that Brian Wood's doing, um, that's a really good story, and it's really hyperactive and, and cool and fun, and it's characters you know, it's, it's situations that you're not necessarily familiar with, but you're more attuned to because of the characters. They, this is a whole, Legacy is a whole new set of people that are connected to those, those individuals, and it still kind of carries through and has the same feeling, has the same kind of sense of dread. You know, you have uh, an established, you know, Jedi Knights and Sith Masters and blah, 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 all that stuff's there, and they're using it really well. And I just think this book is doing a wonderful job of getting you kind of stoked on, on Star Wars and not necessarily it being the same people that you're used to because we're gonna get a ton of Star Wars stuff in the next couple years with new movies, new shows, new comic books, new everything. And this is one of those things that gets I hope gets people excited for like more expanded universe things in other media. So definitely totally stoked on this book. The the actual story itself, it's not over. There's still like stuff happening and it's really cool and exciting. I can't wait for it, so I'm giving it five nerd skulls. This week marks the release of Invincible 103, and I really, really enjoyed this issue. Robert Kirkman is back on his game. If you remember last week, I said The Walking Dead was back, and uh, Negan is a new type of villain. And in this issue of uh, Invincible, Angstrom Levi is back. It's an old villain, but in a new, new, fantastic way. And uh, I'm glad he's back. He's my favorite villain in almost any comic book. Uh, so I'm going to give it five out of five nerd skulls, as I always give Invincible. But this one is especially good, so you have to go pick it up. Angstrom Levi's back, so please. Please just go pick it up. I got to read Animal Man number 21, and I don't know if I've told you guys this before, but I love this book. We're seeing Buddy still kind of dealing with the death of his son and being nominated for an Academy Award, and just him kind of figuring out where he is in his life. I mean, his daughter and his wife have left him. Uh, you actually get to see Maxine in this and see kind of where her head's at. With all this, with Cliff, she, uh, uh, her brother's dead, and the mo her mom's concerned that she's not grieving the way she should be, but that's because being connected to the Red and being basically what she's calling herself, Animal Girl, she's confident that she can find Cliff in the Red and bring him back, so she's not really stressing about any of this. But uh, you get to see how this whole celebrity thing is affecting animal man's life and his grieving process and him just trying to go out and do what he does either way i love this book it's been awesome every issue so far i'm giving this one four to five nerd skulls let me know what you guys think i got to read fantastic four number nine and this story revolves heavily around reed and ben reed is uh taking ben back in time to figure out if he is in fact responsible for 
the making of Doctor Doom. Uh, it's not, to me, it wasn't quite as interesting as it sounded. I thought it was gonna be really cool, and I was just, I was not interested as I was reading it. There's a really great speech that Reed gives Ben at the end that lasts for a couple pages I thought was great, but the rest of the book didn't quite live up to it. Um, I'm gonna give it three nerd skulls. All right, guys, so I got to read the conclusion to Age of Ultron, uh, Age of Ultron number 10. And uh, I've been a huge fan of the series for, for, for since, since it started. It's an awesome miniseries, it's a great event. Brian Michael Bendis knows how to do these things. Hell yeah, I'm so stoked for it. And I gotta say, I am really, I wouldn't say I'm disappointed, uh, 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 but I kinda am, because Bendis always ends his events leading into other events. Now, while I'm not gonna go into what happens, obviously that's stupid of me because I'm not a spoilerific douche, but it's really weird and like kind of just like, oh, okay, that makes sense, that's what would have happened, that's what should have happened, that's what they were leading up to, but when it happens, it doesn't seem as cool. It doesn't seem as, oh, it just happens and you're like, oh. And then something else comes of that situation and, and you find out that things have been going on for too long and buttons are reset, pretty much. And it just kind of, ugh. What? And then it's a, it's a tease, essentially, for like three different books at the end of it. And one of them isn't even in the universe that we've been reading about. And it's just kind of like, really? You're just selling more books at this point. You're just trying to sell more books at this point. And like, it's probably going to be a great story. It's probably going to be really fun. It's probably going to put a lot of people in danger. It's probably going to kill a lot of people. And people are going to feel it. And it's going to be intense. But I don't know. I want this story to focus. I wanted this story to focus on what was going on. And it kind of like blew it up into something else. And looking back on it, that's pretty much all Brian Michael Bendis' events. That's pretty much everything that he puts out. And it's awesome because it's like this giant legacy of stories. It's great. And I'm, I'm going to give it th th four Nerd Skulls. I was going to give it three, but it's actually really good. And it's actually really fun. So I'm going to give it a good score, but I'm a little disappointed and I wanted more. That's, that's it. I wanted more. Hey, fellow nerds, Chasper here with my review of Batwoman issue 21. Uh, Co-writers Williams and Blackman pretty much did an awesome job penning a uh, interesting story about uh, Killer Croc. Uh, in the issue itself, he was on death's door and was revitalized and renewed uh, with the help of a few people, which I may not spoil. But it's interesting because with him being saved from this group, uh, they wanted him to take out Batwoman. And as the story goes along, you see that Killer Croc is, is going to attempt to do what they ask him to do, but it also is a small backstory to how Killer Croc became who he was and how the torment of him being younger really motivated him to be a ferocious monster that he is now. Uh, you really get a grasp of you know him being the you know, uh, animalistic creature that he is now and get a sense of who he was as a child. So I really did like it. And Frank Avila did a really good job with the artwork. Uh, the only thing I didn't necessarily like was the, uh, at least the text bubbles that in regards to uh, Killer Croc talking, it was really uh, raspy in a sense, but uh, at least that's how they wrote it. Um, or at least in the illustration wise of the text, it was just, you know, distorted, and I get it, it's Killer Croc talking, but it was a little too much. Uh, but overall, the issue was pretty cool. Um, definitely something you should check out uh, for Killer Croc fans, nonetheless. Uh, I definitely give this a three out of five Nerd Skulls. Check it out. All right, I got to read Superior Spider-Man, number 12. I know at the beginning, I was kind of not liking this book. It's come around on me, but I almost feel like the, the story we have now is what the book should have started out as, but Kind of seeing them eliminating Peter Parker from his brain and doing all that. It's, it's kind of coming together. Doc Ock still is not the Spider-Man that he should be, you know, for, for being as superior as he is. You still see him making mistakes and you still see him just... He doesn't have the, the caring emotion that Peter Parker did as Spider-Man. Uh, even this, when this issue ends, it, he's making a decision to kind of just go for something he was told to do and not factor in anyone else, not doing the choice you'd usually see Spider-Man make, which does make him different and it does make this book interesting. 
uh, Lizard, since they are on, uh, you know, they are in prison, he gets free, and it looks like he's going to be involved in the next issue, which is cool because ever since they kind of locked him up, even you know they've been building up to something with Kurt Connors being in the Lizard's body. Either way, loving this book. I'm going to get four to five hundred skulls. Let me know what you thought. Hey there, guys. Uh, so I got to review Conan number 17. And uh, after the last issue with uh, the crazy hallucinogenic trip that Conan and his pirate lover queen uh, bullet take, which was actually a really trippy issue. It was really cool and interesting. And, you know, this book has been all action and craziness and sneaking around and Conan being a barbarian. That issue kind of switched it to where that happened, but it was in a crazy dream state. And, oh man, what's going on? You know, Indigata Navita was playing and stuff. Like, it was, it was awesome. And this issue, it's like those things are still going on. There's still a lot of questions and things are being found out about each other and these two characters. They're, they're going through things. And it, it, it was really weird. I thought it was okay, drugs are over, now it's back to the story, but it seemed like drugs are still going. And, I mean, hey, that's always cool, right? Um, don't do drugs, kids. Uh, anyways, uh, uh, this issue was just really cool. It's really mysterious and it ends with like a crazy, oh, oh, what is that? Is it the future? Is that going on now? What's happening? So I'm definitely excited for this. I love what this book is doing and it just looks beautiful every month for Nerd Skulls for Conan. I got to read the My Little Pony micro series number five issue of Pinkie Pie. Uh, this one is very similar to uh, the Twilight Sparkle one where she kind of has this idol that she, who's an old person and she ends up kind of helping him. This guy is a clown, which is, it makes sense for Pinkie Pie and I feel like it's, it works as a comic. I don't necessarily know if it's something that they would put into the, into the show, so I think it really worked. It was a great thing for a comic and as a plus, I know I had a problem with the Rainbow Dash one that I didn't really feel like I was reading Rainbow Dash, but this felt like Pinkie Pie. So overall, I thought it was a really great book. I'm going to give it four and a half Nerd Skulls. I got to read Darth Vader and the Ninth Assassin, number three. This issue is particularly awesome because we get to see Vader kind of move and talk in a way that you've never seen him. You know, in the movies, he's menacing and he's the bad guy, but he's very, very kind of... He isn't really getting too much action. In this one, you see, you kind of get a glimpse of who he was as Anakin, you know, like who he was as early Darth Vader and running around doing, you know, you know like just using how smart he is still as Vader, not, not this kind of menacing figure from the side. You really get to see him involved and in doing stuff in this. And they're, they're building up to something crazy here with this ninth assassin. He's kind of watching Vader from the shadows, uh, waiting to make his move. But I can't wait to see the fight between these guys. There's been some really quality Star Wars books out lately, and this is definitely one of them. I'm giving them four to five nerd skulls.